<laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. And this was actually sort of irresistible. Uh, we use waste and sewage, and so I just couldn't not go poop tech to pop tech. So had, had to happen. Um, as, as Andrew said, uh, I helped uh, co-found a company called Micromitis. And essentially what we do is uh, take raw sewage and convert it into a biodegradable plastic. And the way that we do that is we take, we take that sewage and we feed it to a set of bacteria in a bunch of reactors. And then they, the, the bacteria actually turn it into a plastic. It's an energy storage mechanism. So we harvest those cells and we, we, we take the plastic and we clean it off and then we're left with just this high value, clean, biodegradable plastic that could replace all the plastics you're used to using for disposable applications. Um, and we think that's pretty important. Uh, one of the main reasons, as you're aware, is that uh, plastic, all the plastic you've ever used, is derived from oil, which is very expensive. I and mean, we think of plastic as this, as this cheap commodity. But in fact, it's actually a very expensive thing to produce. You have to drill down and get the oil from several miles below the earth, pump it up, send it to a refinery, refine it, pull out fractions, send it to a chemical manufacturer. They polymerize it. They have a resin. They send that to a plastic manufacturer, and yada, 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 until you end up with uh, some product that you use for five minutes. Um, so we, we look at that, and it looks kind of ridic sort of ridiculous from our standpoint. Everything you need to make plastic is actually up here just on the surface of the earth. It's in sewage. All the ingredients of sewage have what you need to make plastic, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's just free, available carbon. And all those chemical facilities, well, that's what bacteria are. They, they convert one chemical compound into another. They're excellent at doing that. And so we look at that, and we, we, we think we have a much easier method and, and certainly a, a cheaper way of doing it. And then, of course, there's the, the environmental impact of plastic. Once we've used it, uh, we throw it away. And what we're all learning as a society is that there is no away. Um, there's just somewhere else. And that somewhere else is sometimes a landfill. If we're lucky, often it's the environment and specifically the oceans. As, as David did a really good job yesterday describing these, these plastics in the ocean are having a devastating effect. Um, there are literally these huge islands of plastic that are floating and swirling around in the oceans, some of them larger than the state of Texas. And just to give you an idea, if that was our plastic that we're making, within six months to a year, they would be completely biodegraded and gone. This whole problem would be eliminated. So we think that's pretty important. Another aspect of what we're doing that we, that we think has an impact is around wastewater treatment. Um, all of the world's largest cities are getting larger. I think you're aware of this. And that means huge volumes of waste are actually coming down the pipeline and impacting these wastewater treatment plants all over the planet, whether it's uh, Los Angeles or Chicago or New Delhi. Uh, more and more, larger and larger volumes are coming down. And actually dealing with that waste, those solids, is very difficult. I mean, you can't easily burn it. You can't throw it in the ocean. You can't just dig a hole and stick it in there. What they actually do is they spend a lot of money drying it out, putting it in trucks, and then just driving until they get somewhere where there's not a lot of people. They spread it out. It eventually decays into methane and CO2. But, and then trucks go back and get more. And it's just this cycle that's extremely expensive to dispose of. And so we think that's an important aspect of what we're doing. And what we do is we actually locate a facility on site with a waste treatment plant. And we take a lot of what they call their organic load, uh, essentially a lot of the organics and the solids that come out. And we convert it into something that's usable. So we think that's pretty important. Um, sewage is actually kind of interesting. Uh, it's got all these different ingredients in it, but a lot of things that you would just recognize from your biology class, you know, proteins, amino acids, fats, a lot of fatty acids, uh, carbohydrates, and some sugars. And there's really no species of bacteria that's going to preferentially eat all of those. Uh, so what we do is we, we've, we've aggregated a library of microbes that make bioplastic, uh, but can each feed on a particular uh, component of sewage. And so in that way, we can efficiently digest all these different components of sewage and turn it into a bioplastic uh, that, that then has some market value. Um, the plastic is actually, I mean, you would recognize this as plastic. If I handed some to you, you would say, yeah, that's plastic. It's actually a polyester. It's the same, same texture, same feel, same properties as the plastic you've used all your life. The only difference is that the chemical formula is just right, and this isn't a coincidence, uh, that enzymes produced by bacteria can break it down. So it's an energy storage mechanism, if it, uh, and that's how they actually harvest the energy. If this is in the ocean, it's bacteria that actually degrade it. Um, so we looked at this, and you know, we thought, this is a really elegant solution. It uh, solves two problems simultaneously, and which was you know, used to some really cool science. It was very attractive to us. And we're making this great bioproduct. 
but it's not just what we're making, it's, it's how we're making it. Um, I would say that in general, all of the materials that we have are, utilize what I'd call the extractive economy. Essentially where we go into the environment and we essentially grab a resource, whether that's oil or that's coal or mining or, or land from, you know, for agriculture, and then we, then we use it. We manufacture something and use it and then we immediately throw it back to nature where it accumulates. This model served us pretty well for the last 100 years, but I don't think anyone has any illusions about it working for the next 100 years. And so we've got to think of something different to do. And I think for the most part what we've been doing is shifting the burden to ourselves where we just say, let's use less. Let, you know, if, if we're buying groceries, let's use a cloth grocery bag instead of a plastic grocery bag. Let's use a tin water bottle instead of a plastic water bottle. Let's sort of obsessively shut the lights off every time we leave the house. And although that buys us some time, uh, I think that's essentially a false solution and we have to recognize that. What we need to do is demand better solutions. They're out there and I hope to be one of them. Thank you.